What's up guys, Max here. I'm the host of the Scuttlebutt Show and people are always asking me about my setup and how I run my live streams and make my videos. So let's get right into the desk setup tour. First, a quick disclaimer. I worked a full-time job while I was getting this show started and bought most of this gear with the extra savings that I had. I know that what you're gonna see is an extremely expensive setup and I don't want anyone to think that they need to go out and buy all of this stuff all at once. It took me to last four years to get to this point. And also there's links in the description down below for everything shown in this video with a couple of caveats and their affiliate links too. So using those would help me out as well. And you're not paying a penny more for the product if you do buy it through my affiliate links. So let's start with some of the less sexy stuff, but absolutely critical components of my setup, the desk and the curtains. The desk is a motorized stand-up desk that I bought at the military exchange out here in Okinawa where I live. It's the perfect size and height for me. It goes higher and lower than I ever actually needed to. It operates as my tripod, thanks to my super clamp solution for the camera that I'm using and more on that coming up. And it's large enough and especially has enough depth that I can fit all of my peripherals and monitors and lights on it with room to spare. The only downside of this desk is that I couldn't find this particular model online anywhere. So there's no link for this one down below, but here are the dimensions of it if you wanna go out and look for a similar one. Now I said curtains, not exciting, right? Wrong. I could not do my job and put on this show if I couldn't control the light in this room. So I have these blackout curtains. So no matter what time of the day it is or what the weather is like, I can fully control the look in here. Actually, hold on a second. This is what it looks like if I had had the ambient light coming in. So that's super important. And also those are linked down in the description below as well. Now let's talk about some peripherals. For my mouse and keyboard setup, I'm using the Logitech products, all of them. The craft keyboard with this scroll wheel is perfect for apps like Photoshop, where I can quickly adjust brush settings when I'm working on thumbnails or switching tabs in Safari. Even changing the brightness on the screen is helpful on this thing. I have two mouses, mice, mouse eye, whatever that's called. They're the Logitech MX Master 2 and 3. I use the 2 for the gaming stuff and 3 for normal work. They're both incredible. The 2 was so good that I upgraded to the 3 and it's even better, but the 2 is still a great choice. The battery lasts for months, it feels like. The customization is great and the feel is just right for me. Absolute, I recommend these. I have a Wacom Intuos Pro drawing tablet for when I'm working on graphics for the show. And while I don't use it as much as I thought I would, when I do need it, it's a lifesaver. I have a Stream Deck XL, which is a fantastic product that allows me to operate Streamlabs OBS and control my computer and the lights I use to light myself, which are the Elgato key lights. And we're gonna talk more about those in a moment. The Stream Deck is set up so with a single press of a button, I can turn on all three and I can control the brightness and color temperature from the desktop to get some cool looks like this. I use the Stream Deck to save replays of my show when it's live, switch scenes, open anchor.com to upload my podcast and much more again absolutely recommend. All right, next up in my peripherals department is my Lacey two big hard drive that holds eight terabytes of data and interfaces with my main computer, the iMac Pro. I record all of my OBS streams to it via Thunderbolt ports on the back, and I store all my archive videos and important stuff on there. This thing rocks as a data storage solution. I think it can even run another monitor and has an SD card, CFast card, and USB ports on the front of it. I have a CFast 2.0 card reader on top of that for use with my Blackmagic cameras. To manage my audio, I use the Rodecaster Pro by Rode. There just isn't a better product out there for podcast producing, and it works incredibly well as a live streaming tool as well. I regularly use the sound pads to play back laugh tracks or other pre-programmed audio cues. I could have my streaming computer, gaming computer, phone, and multiple XLR mics going at the same time. I take it out on location, record events and interviews as well. And it's just a matter of unplugging a couple cables and I'm good to go. And with this cable, I can operate it on battery power, which is a total lifesaver as well. For listening, I use the Audio-Technica headphones that came with the kit as well. They're comfortable and sound more than good enough for what I'm doing. I also use Rode Pod mics for my recordings. You're hearing that mic right now. I bought this all as a kit from B&H, which is linked below, or you can buy each item individually, which I've also taken time to provide the links to. You're welcome. And now guys, is a good time to thank the sponsor of this video, me. Check out scuttlebuttshow.com to get cool merch like these shirts and this desk mat to make sure you keep your desk safe while you're working. It's big enough that I can use my mouse and keyboard on it at the same time, even while gaming, but not so big you have to worry about it not fitting on any desk that you're gonna use it with. Links to all that stuff is in the description down below. The main computer I use is my iMac Pro from circa 2017 with 10 cores, 64 gigs of RAM, Radeon Pro 16 gig graphics card, and four terabytes of storage. It's a beast. I can run DaVinci Resolve, watch a movie, edit photos, and browse on Google Chrome without it even skipping a beat or the fans turning on. Even after four years, this thing is crushing it. 
I have a second monitor for my iMac, which is the LG Ultrafine 4K display. I found this totally randomly at a used electronics store for a great price. I was beyond excited when I got it home and it worked. I use it in vertical mode with Streamlabs and Discord and usually have some uh, finder windows open or reference docs for whatever it is that I'm working on that day. My gaming computer is a custom build with an AMD Ryzen 9 3900X and an RTX 3060 graphics card. It has three terabytes of storage, which fills up pretty quick when you're playing games like Call of Duty. This computer has not let me down ever, even on brand new AAA games with max graphics. I'm hitting 90 to 120 frames consistently. The monitor for that is a 27 inch curved 1440p gigabyte monitor. It's not the brightest or most colorful monitor, but it absolutely gets the job done for me. I would love to upgrade this in the near future if the opportunity comes along. I also have one other cheap microphone for talking to my teammates in the game so it doesn't loop through the roadcaster. Honestly, it doesn't even have a brand name. It's just something I found in a store. You can't game without a chair. So I picked this one up also from the exchange, the military exchange out here, and it works pretty great. No complaints about this one. Also couldn't find a link to this one for the description down below. Okay, next to get all of these inputs working on one computer, I've got the A10 Mini Pro ISO. It's a mouthful, but it's awesome for running my entire setup, including this overhead shot, and I can quickly switch between inputs during my live shows. Run picture in picture, manage transitions, and more, and it takes up to four 1080 60p inputs. This is one of the key components of my workflow. My only complaint is a lack of an on-off switch. You literally have to unplug it and plug it back in to turn it on and off. When I'm editing, I like to listen to my audio as high quality as possible. So I picked up a set of KRO, KRK Rocket 5 speakers, and I have two of them off to the sides of my desk. These help a lot for finalizing audio that I can trust will sound good after it's rendered on almost any device. I have edited so many things on a computer and then listened to it on my laptop or phone and realized the audio is way off from where it needs to be and I need to go back and fix it. These speakers fixed that problem. I picked them up on sale on Black Friday for a pretty good deal. Also link below. Cameras. I have an insane camera setup. I'll be the first to admit it. My primary camera is the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro with a Sigma 18-35 to lens on it. The full-size HDMI port and mains power make it a perfect streaming camera. I can control the color settings. It never overheats or shuts down on me. And I even left it on once for like a day and a half after forgetting to shut it down after my show. And it was still perfectly fine. I highly recommend this for anyone serious about video production. That is mounted on this Manfrotto arm attached to a super clamp, allowing me to run this setup literally anywhere. I use the Parrot teleprompter for recording scripted videos like the one you're watching right now, while still being able to address the camera directly. This is my favorite portable teleprompter and it's linked down below. I have a second camera. It's a wide shot of my desk that is an Ursa Mini 4K that I bought back in 2015. Again, this is overkill, I know. It also has a Sigma 18 to 35 on it and is attached by a super clamp with a ball head. I run an SDI cable to a converter under my desk and the HDMI cable into the back of the A10 Mini. It's crazy. For the overhead shots, I have a glide gear rig on top of two C-stands. This setup is large, but it's effective and moving the overhead setup off the desk prevents any shake and micro jitters caused by me bumping in the desk or moving the gear around. And now maybe most importantly is the lighting. I use three Elgato key lights for myself. These are just perfect for a home studio. I used to run Rotolite EOS panels and an Innova Pro 2 all on C-stands in this room with these long power cables and I would have to climb behind my desk to change any settings or turn them on and off. With these, I just hit the one switch on the stream deck and I'm done, all three on or off. They're connected over Wi-Fi as well, which makes it super easy. They're soft enough to still look great and can get extremely bright. Bright enough to light up myself any Elgato green screen that I use for keying myself out of some videos. This green screen is the best I've ever used and it's big enough for most spaces with one person. I'm six foot two and if I'm standing up, it's not quite tall enough for me. So I put it on top of a couple toolboxes. So just a heads up if you're looking at that one. For all of my accent lighting, I use LifeX bulbs and strips. These are my favorite. I've tried a few others, but these are the best. I have two connected behind my desk, illuminating the wall in my Elgato Wave soundproofing panels. Look, I, I swear this isn't a sponsored video by Elgato. And it gives the whole room a more full look. Then behind me here, I have two more strips that I can run all kinds of cool effects to and set any tone that I want. Here are some lighting examples that I've made with my setup. Then I have one LifeX bulb to cast a blue light over the other side of my head. Over here? Over here. Which makes so much of a difference. Look at what it looks like if that thing's turned off. Like, see, that sucks. Turn that back on. And altogether, this totals up to almost $22,000. Oh my God. But remember, I do professional video production and use this gear to make money. It's all paid for itself by now, and I also gathered it piece by piece over many years. Don't feel like you have to have all of this to put out great content. Just start and keep creating. Wow, is that it? Oh, wait, almost forgot. This channel is all about the military, and as a sailor, no desk would be complete without my Blue Jackets manual. If you guys are interested in following along with me for more fun content, gaming, live streams, and more, and you might even learn something, you know what to do. 
smash that subscribe button. We also have Patreon and channel memberships if you're interested in joining the Scuttlebutt team. More info about that in the links down below. Thanks for watching this video about my way over the top and expensive setup. I would love to hear what you thought in the comments down below. What kind of setup are you rocking? What would you change about my setup? I would love to hear it. Drop me a comment. All right, guys, I look forward to talking to you all soon. And until then, that the scuttlebutt what's up guys thanks for watching that video i hope you enjoyed it if you did go ahead and hit that subscribe button up in the corner here and check out this next video if you want in the description down below there's links we can get scuttlebutt show merch and find out how you can support the channel i really appreciate it and i look forward to talking to you guys very soon